I am on my way over to Northfield. It's a beautiful day right now. It would have to be 35 degrees Celsius. No, 35 is a bit much. It would have to be 31 Celsius for me to be super happy with the weather. It's been. I don't know why everybody is doing so much honking today. None of it was at me. It was this guy's honking, that guy's honking, that guy's honking. I felt like I was in Quebec again. Sorry for all my Quebec clients. Um... Um, so yeah, the weather is beautiful today, but it has been a dreary week on the weather side for sure. Uh, we'll take all the sun we can get. So on our way, what's that? It's not getting Oh yeah, it's gonna get nice. A chance of rain Tuesday, but 25 Celsius. So that's like what, 80? Mm. Yeah, I think it's 80. Uh, 25, yeah, it's like 80. Um, so I want to talk about the racehorses. I'm going to ease my way in this week. Racehorses, three-year-olds, I want to talk to Amy. I'm going to tell everybody now, this is where we're going to see the sets. I said in an earlier video today, we're going to see the sets start to change. The horses that are ready to go with one another are going to start going with one another. There's going to be horses that are a little bit behind. I trained some horses in, let's say roughly, it might have been 19, it might have been 22. Let's just use the number 20. We trained the horses in 20 on Tuesday and came back uh, again today in around 20-ish a little bit of wind so I got a look at everybody were they ready to do that work was that a lot for them did they have a rough week themselves how did they eat their lunch you know we'll go to the barn Amy and I tomorrow check on every horse did they eat their breakfast are they sharp are they feeling good and then from that discern you know was that a little too much are they on their toes are they feeling good are they sharp are they looking for more work we don't really want to go any faster with them for the next two weeks but this was a heavy enough lifting week where we can get a real uh, a barometer, we take a barometer of, of what is going on in the barn. And a baseline, I guess. This is where we're at right now with each and every horse, and this is where they fit set-wise. And, and the reason I say that, and I, I do that, say that, as I said, this one of the grain of salt, I need everybody to understand what I'm saying. It doesn't mean, even if I say, well, that horse wasn't ready to go in the top group right now, it doesn't mean that horse isn't gonna end up being a nice horse. Might have a bigger horse, might have a horse that's coming off the virus, was a little bit sick, or had a splint, or a curb crowd. You know, maybe just a big giant horse that's a slow, you know, a horse that every week gets a little bit better. And when you ask for that big jump, they just can't accommodate. That happens also. Every single horse is different in a multitude of ways. So uh, don't read too much into it when you see the sets. But I did want to tell everybody, now we're starting to see where everybody can, can shake out right now in real time. Now, I uh, want to talk about the racehorses this week. Uh, we got a, a number of horses racing. Wasn't our best week at the track. It was a good week, right? It was a, you know, it was kind of a so-so week, but it was, certainly wasn't a bad week. Uh, brace for landing. That, that was the epitome of how the week went. Looked like the trip that he got, I thought that was the trip he was going to get. I wasn't driving him. John McDonald was. Did a great job driving. Got a proper second quarter. Brace didn't fire. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Now that I say it out loud, I think maybe it's worth saying to Eric, hey, might be worth throwing a closed bridle on Brace for Landing this week rather than going back to the open bridle again with him. Ooh, this looks yummy. Somebody's is all over and the floor. Oh, that's, that's too bad. Ollie, look at this. Look, Ollie makes a mess of everything. He eats uh, at least 10% of the food and condiments that are on his body or clothes Ew, when he's done. Yeah, and then like drinks and then backwashes. Worse than Addie did when she was a, a, a little baby. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Anyway, uh, so brace for landing. I think maybe a hood with cups, maybe a closed bridle. Close them up a little bit. Now, the only downside of closing them up, he's going to get a little hotter, Ugh. right? He's going to be a little warm at the gate, but he was trotting good the other day. I just felt that he, you know, he just, he looked a little blah. Was he a little sick? Everybody kind of raced that way last week, and that wasn't just in Kentucky. That was kind of felt like everywhere, right? whether it be the Philly and the Colt, the Phillies and Colt in Pennsylvania or a couple of the horses here. Hopefully that doesn't drag on to tonight because I'm racing on fancy like in 45 minutes. But um, just seemed a little flat. So maybe close him up, see how he is. I guess uh, worth a discussion between Eric and John to see what they want to do on Monday. I'm not going there this week. Kings County didn't get in. And as I was saying to Amy, Amy's worried that I'm going to be gone all the time to Kentucky. You're gone here, gone there. Because Tuesday I, I'm going to the Meadows to qualify horses. But this was kind of in the, this was always in planning in the periphery, right? I talked about maybe going to Pennsylvania a week ago, but I had to go to Kentucky. So once we get arson qualified, memory and imagination qualified, um, 
JK Victory qualified. I'm going to take Gypsy Hill over also. I've made a decision to take him over. Um, then we won't have to worry about it. Now, I'm getting off track. I've got one horse done in five minutes of the age horse. It's very unlike you. You know what? That's sarcasm. They can't see me sometimes. No, but they can hear you. You know, they say that sarcasm is the weakest form of wit. So you would know. Oh, oh, that's a burn. Double burn. Sure, whatever, bud. Uh, so brace for landing. Um, we'll race him this week. Maybe closed up a little bit, but there may be more to it than that. We'll see. Uh, collector race great, finishing second in the final in uh, Miami Valley. Now uh, I guess I'd ask Stacy, you know, point blank, what's he fit? She said, oh, he fits uh, the forty claimer. I said, I'm not putting him in a claimer yet. What else does he fit? Well, he still fits in Elmer's of four. We'll race him there next week. Fine, um, but I, I'm I'm still on the path of maybe sending him back to Ontario. And it certainly has nothing to do with Stacey and Brett, just that the horse fits a lot of classes because by money, he fits in the meaty part of the order in Ontario. If he can do in that class in Ontario, we won't have to worry about moving him until we probably have to rest him. And I think he is teetering on being a, a long-term type of horse for us. By long-term, I mean a year or two, certainly not eight. But... Uh, huh. I, <laughs> <laughs> a year or two. So, Collector raced great, finishing second. Irish Ray didn't race great, did not finish second, and quite frankly, uh, my mother was not happy about my choice of words for him after the race. I just say he's not a good horse. He's not a great horse. He's a 50. He, on a nice day at the Meadows, if we can get that wrinkle at him where he's on the right line so hard, probably try 56 in a piece. It's not a horrible animal. He's just not not a great horse, right? And he's struggling right now, especially in that numbers of 4,000. That's tough. That's a tough bunch. Uh, Kenobi is not struggling. He's doing very well and has excelled since going to Saratoga. You know, Blanton's Blue didn't get in the other day and one of our clients had messaged me and said, Paul had messaged me and said, hey, you know, there's lots of classes for him in Saratoga. He may be headed that way anyway, so um, I'll likely be talking to Mark. Mark and I, you know, the start of the season, we're both jostling, trying to get anything done. So Mark and Melissa and I, we we don't get to talk as much until the season is underway, right? Where we know where the horses are racing, where they're going, and what they're doing. Right now, everybody's jostling, trying to get everything set up for the for the summer. So we'll see that, but that is definitely an option moving forward. Um, Spitfire Overseas is in Monday, and man, he has really been a treat to watch this spring. Not with his uh, out his mistakes; he's not perfect. He can't spring off the car quick, but he can get you there, right? You get him doubled up. He can make a break. So he's not a perfect horse, but man, when he is on, he is locked in and very, very fast. You know, 51 and 1 already this year. We're going to have a lot of fun with this guy moving forward. Uh, Spitfire was he's just a nice horse. Stay Special has moved into our broodmare ranks. She was bred today. Was she? Yep, to Monty Mickey, I believe. Yeah, no, nope, didn't take long at all. I was uh, thoroughly pleased to hear that. Um, for that many of you that may be following us and this is news to you, you didn't know, Stay Special ended up developing another uh, uh, another line in her knee. Now, we could have rested her or brought her back, but my take on that is simple. She already got six wins, right? Sure, she could come back, win that seventh race, maybe race in an hour a 10 somewhere, but then where? She could be anywhere from a 15 claimer to an open mare, but the fact that she's already injured her knees twice leads me to believe that there may be, um, you know, obviously there's, there's some underlying issues there that... that cause them to be a, a focal point, right, for, for lameness with her. So I have the utmost respect for this for this mare. Uh, she is well-bred. She's out of a sister to check six and uh, fast. Never really interfered. I know we had knee boots on her last couple, but she didn't really need them in, in Northfield. Doesn't really, never really wore a boot. So why wouldn't we breed her? Well-bred, fast, strong, and tough as nails. Yes, that is exactly what we want in a brood mare. So Stay Special has been bred. Tactical Mounds qualified today. Megan said she qualified well, sent me a little snippet of her qualifier. She looked very, very good, which is not shocking. Her qualifier here at Northfield was sparkling when I went with her, and she was amazing. So happy that Megan and Scott got her rolling. It's going to be a little trickier this year, right, And and uh, with who we send down there and what we send down there because, you know, I, Megan does a great job, but I don't want to handcuff Scott, right? And that's, and that, that's kind of unfair to both of them, but... You know, everybody, everybody, exactly. It's just everybody, we're all trying to do the best that we can. And if if there's a horse to send and it's not going to be, uh, uh, it's not going to interfere with Scott's schedule, then by all means, that's where they'll go. But we don't have that many now. As I said the other day, Rosetta maybe. I think Grand Slam deal, who I don't really think Scott's that interested in driving. 
<laughs> anyway, right now. Uh, I thought that would be going to she, she is, but we have all the chimpanzees got to go to Kentucky, right? Where I thought you said Mel might not go to Mel, Kentucky. yeah, Mel, Melisandre. We're going to take our time with her. And if she's not ready for Oak Grove or we want to really just wait to Lexington, then yeah, we could sup her in. And that's exactly the line of thought that, I, that I'm taking in that regard. Uh, we're really getting off the beaten path here with yeah, the aged horses. Um, <laughs> Tech Song Soprano has been racing great. He'll race next week. He got a week off this week. All gas, no brakes. Been jogging back a couple of days. He'll probably start training. I doubt next week, but I would say the following Tuesday. So a week from this coming Tuesday, we'll get him back training. Yeah, it was a minor injury, but as I said to Dominic, we were kind of in between. He maybe needed a little break anyway. So there's just this time away. It wasn't like he was, you know, laying on a beach in, in Mexico. But at the same token, um, give him the proper time and give him a little break and then and then get him back in the swing of things. We know he can race in the summer because he did his best work for, for us that I saw anyway at the Meadows. Just that one start that I raced him, he was tremendous. So uh, a summer horse and um, a horse that's going to do us some good. Um, greatest ending, did not get in last week. Hopefully we'll be in this week. No, I can't drive him on Saturday. I, I did tell Amy, my wife, right here, that I would be going home. So uh, with, what are you doing here? You gonna wreck the place? My zipper's stuck. Oh. Why don't you pull up a little bit so that opens? Well, I thought I did pull up and off. What, do they just need me to bump into it? To that's well, like that thing. It was broken this morning. Yeah, they broke it. I laughed at them, too. <laughs> so the, the way they made the gates here, the, the arm back there, I broke it one day. Where I bumped, hit it and knocked it over. And it's been done about 15 times. And they're getting very frustrated. Well, um, they didn't put it in the It's side. just, it's, it, the whole thing, it, I could see what they did, but it was not thought out. I guess in the best way, but whatever. Hindsight, right? We know all about that. So Greatest Ending didn't get in this week. He'll race next week on Saturday. I suspect Chris Lems will drive uh, Greatest Ending. JK Victory, I'm surprised, but uh, eager and excited. I'm going to qualify him Tuesday at the Meadows. Jason McGinnis says he is ready to rock. So we will qualify him uh, Tuesday morning at the Meadows. I got a full load now because I'm taking Gypsy Hill also over. Five horses will depart here Monday afternoon with me. I will go over to Pennsylvania and qualify them all on Tuesday, or qualify four of them, school pickpocket on Tuesday. Uh, so that will be probably one of the most exciting days on our calendar so far this year, and it isn't even a parimutuel race card. Um, looks like money. What, here's a horse that was uh, injured off what uh, a millennium it felt like. He was off, what, five months? Mm -hmm. Comes out his first start and trots his last quarter in 25 and four. I saw that. It's a freak of nature. What a nice horse. Uh, and was great after all green lights after the race too, which is always important. Renegade Gypsy races tonight, so good luck to all my partners with him. He's been doing pretty good things down in Indiana. Sirius Dragon trained today in 2-5. Dominic told me I was talking to him, and he happened to be training with Harry. He did not know with him. She made a break uh, in the last turn or something, but he said she jumped over something. Um, what a mile in 2-5. Uh, Three-point Blue Chip is going to race once more. I thought Three-point Blue Chip was actually going to come back to us. Uh, and still may at some point, but they put him on Lazex and they're going to try him one more time in uh, Oak Grove. So we'll see. Well, I'm going to be watching him extra close uh, this week also. Yo, Mister has been tremendous in Ontario. Harry, it's, he's really grown on Harry, and, and James loves the horse. I got the feeling that they liked him, but really didn't know what he's like. And he's a different horse in a race, and he has really, really raced well. James was really p pleased with him the last little while. Uh, no free lunch. Now, Stacy said, Anthony, bear with me, please. This is almost verbatim. Bear with me, please. It's but with all the rain and everything, the track's been soft. I didn't want to roll the dice, you know, with the injuries this horse has had. Just, I need two weeks. Every time you miss a week, it's going to add a week, and I need two weeks. I said, that's fine. Just get him ready when you can get him ready. Um, you know, whatever's best for the horse is obviously best for us. Oakwood Cowboy, uh, Dominic said, didn't train today. The track was hard as a rock. He was coming off being sore, right? So he wanted to give him, he wanted to wait till Tuesday. He said he will train on Tuesday. I don't imagine it will take long to get him ready. He said he's still at between 90 and 95% sound. They're working on trying to get him obviously back to 100% sound. Uh, but it's been a chore. It's been a chore the last couple of weeks. Um... Where are we at here? Uh, stay close, race great. The other here, off six weeks, trots 55, fourth in the open, race great. He drops way down in class now, too. Kings County missed a week, bled a little bit, back was sore, ankles were sore last week. We get the vet work done on him. He got a week off. He should be ready to rock next week. Hopefully, he draws good. I'd love to draw again. Three, four, five, six with him would be great at Oak Grove. Now, they're not going to be looking for me again coming. There's not going to be no welcome mat rolled out next time, but um, 
eager to race him at Oak Grove's next start. Delicious Stone trained today, trained very, very good, they said, and his lag was great after. And Patrick DePrana, fifth today, but raced good. It was only six horse field, but he was only beat maybe a half a length for third and raced very, very well. I think Chris wishes maybe he had it back so he could drop him in the three hole. He put him in an easy third. And if he had been ended up first over instead of Hunter coming out in front of him, again, easy third. But he raced good. Raced good to finish fifth. So those are your race horses. I apologize. We are all over the place in this video. But that is your racehorse video. Amy and I are going to talk with the two-year-olds and three-year-olds do my opening if I can, if the sun allows me to. But right now, got to go drive our girl. Uh, I'm fancy-like. Take care.